The water we drink is old. It's been here on Earth for a long time. In fact, it's the same water that early humans drank. And also the same water the dinosaurs drank. Yep, the same water. And it's all thanks to the water cycle. But what is the water cycle? It's time to shine a spotlight on the water cycle. The water cycle is the movement of water on Earth and through the atmosphere. All water on Earth is part of the water cycle. No, not a water tricycle, the water cycle. Which of these is part of the water cycle? All water anywhere on Earth is a part of the water cycle. And even though it can sometimes be hard to tell, all of this water is moving. Now, movement of water doesn't only apply to giant fountains or super cool water slides. Water is moving all around us, from running rivers to crashing waves to cascading waterfalls. Water is even flowing underground through layers of soil and rock. Even water that's frozen, like giant glaciers, is slowly moving. Even this puddle on the ground. Eventually, it moves too. When we speed up the footage, Look, the puddle is getting smaller. The water is moving up as it evaporates into the air. Evaporation is when liquid turns into gas, like liquid water becoming water vapor. But for water to evaporate, it needs energy. Where is the energy coming from that evaporates the puddle? Up in the sky, the sun is shining down, giving energy to Earth. The light and heat from the sun adds energy to all water on the Earth's surface. This causes some of the water in rivers, lakes, oceans, and even swimming pools to heat up and evaporate. When liquid water evaporates, it enters the atmosphere. All the time and everywhere all around us, liquid water is evaporating and traveling up, up into the sky. Eventually, up in the atmosphere, the water vapor cools down and condenses into tiny liquid water droplets and all those little water droplets group together to form clouds. Now, clouds might look like giant balls of cotton candy, but as more and more of these water droplets form together, the clouds get bigger and heavier. In fact, the average cloud can weigh more than one million pounds. Eventually, the water droplets and clouds become so large and heavy that something pulls them back down to Earth. What force pulls things down toward the Earth? Gravity is the force that pulls things down toward Earth. And water droplets in clouds are no exception. Water droplets in clouds precipitate or fall back to Earth. Precipitation can be rain, snow, sleet, or hail, or some combination of these. And once back down on Earth, gravity continues to pull the water down. All water that falls on land is pulled by gravity from high places to lower places. For instance, flowing down mountain streams into rivers and finally to the ocean. In fact, any water on Earth that isn't already in an ocean is likely on a downhill journey to an ocean. But at any point on this journey, water can also return to the atmosphere. What causes the water to re-enter the atmosphere? The energy from the sun is continuously heating up water on Earth's surface, causing water to evaporate and continue the water cycle. All living things, including humans, rely on this cycle. But we don't just need the water cycle. We are also a part of it. We drink water every day from rivers, lakes, and underground aquifers. Some of that water stays within our bodies, keeping us hydrated. But as we've seen, water doesn't stay in the same place forever. And eventually the water, um, leaves our body. Then it travels through plumbing and sewers, water treatment facilities, and then back out into streams, lakes, and into the ground, and out to the ocean. Along the way, energy from the sun heats some of the water up, which re-enters the atmosphere, continuing the cycle, just like it has since water first started flowing here on Earth. Now you've got the bright idea. Try explaining it in your own words. What is the water cycle? Here are the important takeaways about the water cycle. The water cycle is the movement of water on Earth. Energy from the sun causes water to evaporate into the atmosphere. Gravity pulls water droplets back down to Earth as precipitation and causes water on Earth's surface to flow downhill toward the ocean. Living things depend on and are part of the water cycle. This is a great start, but there's always more to illuminate. 
What questions do you still have about the water cycle? This has been Spotlight on the Water Cycle, and you've been brilliant.